the Orlando Magic lose again, but as they prepare to come home, they found a path to win today on Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed Locked On Magic. Today is November 7th, 2024. My name is Philip Rossman Reich. I'm the senior writer over at OrlandoMagicDaily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at Philip, R-R underscore O-M-D. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, well, the Orlando Magic were at least competitive this time. What they showed us in the loss of the Indiana Pacers, that allows us to think that maybe they will be okay in the end. We'll get to all that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. If you haven't done so already, be sure to check out the Locked On Magic daily newsletter. It's one stop for ultimate team and league coverage delivered right to your inbox. Sign up for free now at LockedOnDaily.com. That's LockedOnDaily.com. And start your day with the all-new free Locked On Magic newsletter. Today's episode of Locked On Magic is also brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets. If you win your first $5 bet, visit FanDuel.com to get started. Let me start here. I want to just make this point exceedingly clear. So I'm going to start with it at the top of the show. Losses are not good. We are, we are not in the moral victory business. We are not in the business of saying, good try, good effort, good job. That's not what we're here for. The Magic are a playoff team. The Magic entered the season telling us how important every single game was going to be to them. And to come home winless on a five-game road trip, no matter the circumstance, is not acceptable. And we have to hold this team to account to that and say, we know you are better than this. We know they are better than what they played in Oklahoma City and Dallas. We know they're better than what they played in Chicago. It's not that they could have won all these games. There's no shame in losing to Cleveland. There's no shame and losing to Dallas. There's no shame in losing to Oklahoma City. There's no shame in losing to Indiana. The Chicago loss still sticks in my craw. No offense to my Bulls fans, my Bulls friends out there. The Magic have to win these games. And when we look back in May or June, well, if we get to June, then we won't care what happened in November. But if we look back in May, in early May, and ask ourselves, why does this season feel unfulfilling? Or why didn't the Magic accomplish the goals we thought they could accomplish? Just like the Magic said before the season began, or or in the immediate aftermath of last season, they're going to look to this road trip, this stretch of games, and say, we left those on the board. Two games would have given us the six seed. We wouldn't have had to go through the play. Two wins would have given us the five seed, the four seed had a real chance to get out of the first round. Like I said yesterday, the Eastern Conference is giving the Magic a ton of grace. The Indiana Pacers at 4 and 4 are sitting in fourth are sitting in third in the Eastern Conference right now. There is plenty of time to recover, but that also means this is a missed opportunity. And look, there's plenty of reason to criticize Jeff Weltman, the Magic I've not did not build a roster that could sustain the loss of Paolo Banker. But I want to make this point clear too. That's the past. It's done, it's happened, it can't be changed. The question now and the question that's been bugging Magic fans for the last week is how does this team move forward? How does this team figure out a way to make this work because this roster, this team is the reality for the next month, at least. The Magic will not have Paolo Bancaro before December 7th. The Magic aren't going to make any trades until December 15th. And except for maybe adding like a Robert Baker or adding a Jalen Slauson or someone off the Osceola Magic at this point to a two-way contract, 
There's no help coming. This is the group. This group has got to find their way to play. They've got to find a way that works for them to win. And it might be completely different than what they planned in training camp. It might be completely different than what it would be when Paolo, what it will be when Paolo Bancaro returns. This is the group that's got to figure it out. End of story. That's it. That is it. And that's the challenge. And so, again, frankly, losing at Dallas, losing at Cleveland, losing at Oklahoma City, even losing at Indiana, there's no shame in that. They are tough games. They are tough places to play. It would have been hard to have a winning road trip, even if Paolo played. And again, that loss against Chicago, that was one the Magic let go. They were up big. They stopped attacking. Paolo got hurt. They had the terrible fourth quarter. Still haven't really recovered offensively from it, although they had a good game offensively on, on Wednesday. That one hurt. That was one they needed. They needed that one. We all looked at the schedule and said, that's a game you got to win. They didn't win it. And that, that's the one that hurts. Just like as we look ahead to this five-game homestand, the Magic got to go like four and one. Four and one. They, they got to win on this homestand. It's a big homestand already. Make back the ground that you lost here. But the first thing is they got to get a win. They got to find this path forward. And, you know, I, I'm using a Steve Cliffordism here. And, and, and what Steve Clifford used to say is we've got to find our way to play. What does success look like? What does this team have to do to be successful? And if there is a silver lining, if we can forget the result of this game, which, you know, we'll talk about, but if there is a silver lining to come out of Wednesday's 118 to 111 loss to the Indiana Pacers, it's that the Magic do have that path. They've now seen what it will take, what it could take, what it possibly looks like for them to succeed. And that's important. That's something this team needs. If I have been less focused on results over the last week, it's because this team needs a shot of confidence first. A, a shot of belief that they can do it. Because frankly, against Cleveland, against Dallas, it did not look like they believed. It looked like they were shell-shocked. It looked like they were struggling to find something. And I'll make this clear. It's obviously going to take a lot. The margin for error is so much smaller. Just like it was small at the end of this game, when the Magic allowed a 10-0 run to let a one-point deficit become 11, then locked in defensively for the next four minutes, didn't allow a field goal, didn't allow a point, got to within two, Missed opportunities to get to cut further in the lead. And then on that one critical play, Jalen Suggs gets eaten up on a screen. Jonathan Isaac doesn't come over to defend Tyrese Halliburton. He does what Tyrese Halliburton does, gets a big three, makes it a makes it a four-point game or five-point game at the time. Game's over. Magic fought back. They, they they kept grinding, they kept going at it, but they ran out of time. It's why. Being down 18 to start the game, not defending with any kind of intensity early in the game. Uh, there was intensity. I'll, I'll take that back. The Magic defended with energy, but weren't good at it. That can't happen. We know that's not the path. We know that's not the way forward. We know that defense has to be the constant. And while I think a lot of people would say this was a better defensive effort than Oklahoma City, Statistics say this was the worst defensive effort of the bunch. They gave up like 120 points for 100 possessions in this game. We'll get to the defense in a minute. Um, but the Magic just put themselves in such a huge hole and credit to them for fighting out. That taught them how they will win with this group. So what are the elements to victory for the Orlando Magic? What are Magic wins going to look like over the next month? 
That's what we began to see in this Pacers game in a way that we haven't seen in any game to this point. So let's break it down. The path to victory for the Orlando Magic coming up here in just a moment. But first, today's episode of Locked on Magic is brought to you by Hims. You know, the thing about uh, the thing about underwear is the more you think about it, the worse it is. Like that's kind of the, the truth. Like, right? We we don't, you know, we don't want to think about frankly what, what we're wearing. And 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 you want to feel a certain amount of freedom. You, you don't want to think about underwear. If, if you're thinking about your underwear, if you think about what you're wearing beneath your pants, wear pants, people. Um, you're probably doing something wrong. So how do you solve this problem? Well, Skims sent us some free samples. And I can tell you this, Skims is underwear that doesn't feel like you're wearing underwear. It gives you the freedom that you want to be athletic, to just be normal. I have always been kind of a boxer's person, a boxer's guy. And boxers are great, can be a little restricting. Can can be, especially when you're sitting down for long periods of times. So frankly, I, I was a little skeptical to get skips because you know I'm not so much into the boxer brief, into the kind of more tighter, tighter brief type type underwear, but they gave me a few samples and I am a convert. I am a convert. I may be ditching boxers completely. I am adding a lot more boxer briefs to my wardrobe. And frankly, I have Skims to thank for that. Uh, Skims has so many great options to find the right boxer for you, whether it's a boxer brief, whether it's a cotton brief, whether it's a stretch brief, you'll find the right pair for you. So shop Skims Men's right now at skims.com. Let them know we sent you after you place your order. Select podcast in the survey and select our show in the drop-down menu that follows. And if you're looking for the perfect gifts for the whole family, Skims just launched their biggest holiday shop ever, also available at skims.com. So again, check out skims.com and get a brand new underwear experience. It's fantastic. I love these things. I'll probably be buying more now that they gave me a few samples. Um, it pays me a podcast sometimes. Um, but uh, check out Skims today. Again, let it, let them know that you got it from us. Select podcast and survey. Select our show at skims.com. So what is the path to victory for the Orlando Magic? Like, what is that path? It, it, right now, five-game losing streak, four, three really uncompetitive games, one really competitive game. What does this look like? And again, more importantly, What's repeatable from Wednesday's loss that can lead the team to victory? And, and again, what do they need to fix to make sure they don't lose games now? The first thing is obviously on defense. Um, there is no denying that the path to victory for the Orlando Magic, regardless of who's playing, is defense. The Magic have to defend at a high level. and. I have been critical of the defense throughout this road trip. I, I do not think it is playing as well as the numbers would suggest, but also in fairness, the offense has been so abysmally bad. The defense has had no grace. It's had no margin for error. And it's asking a lot for the defense to be perfect, especially in the modern NBA where offenses are really good. And Indiana's really good offense. Oklahoma City's really good offense. Dallas is really good offense. Cleveland's really good offense. The Magic haven't had a chance to like take a breath. And defend. And look, Indiana came out in this game. They made shots. They just they just made every single shot that they took. Orlando was energetic, but you could see the energy level drop as Indiana made shots. And the offense, which was working, wasn't able to keep up. But this is what the Magic have done all year. And, and again, this is a criticism, but this is what is still so promising about the way the Magic play defense. They're still a top 10 defense in the league, by the way. Um, the offense has just been so bad, and the defense hasn't been elite that you really notice it. Um, but the Magic have these moments. They had it in Miami. They had it in Memphis. They had it throughout the game against Brooklyn. They have these moments where their defense just locks in 
and you're done. You can't do anything for five for four or five minutes at a time. It happened in the second quarter when the Magic were down by 18. They went to a 2-3 zone, threw, threw a wrench in Indiana. Indiana really started to slow down and be like, what are we seeing here? How do we beat this? And that enabled the Magic to get back in the game, but they also got some deflections. They got some steals. They got some runouts. They, you know, the Magic matched Indiana in fast break points with 12. Orlando's defense became more solid in that second quarter and carried over into the third and for the final five minutes of the fourth. It's disruptive. It challenges teams. It does all the things that Magic need to do to win. We know what the Magic defense is supposed to look like. But there's obviously still a lot of room for growth. In the fourth quarter, Indiana made 10 of their first 12 shots to take that 11-point lead. And while they went cold the rest of the game, that slip cost them. That slip was the difference in this game. And that has to change. Like, that isn't acceptable. That is, that's what the Magic need to fix. They need that constant, consistent defensive effort. Because when the Magic are able to get stops at the level that they were getting stops in this game, they are pretty darn near unbeatable. They are pretty close to unbeatable. And that is, that's what the Magic are going for, obviously. Um, I've been critical of Orlando's transition defense. Their transition defense in this game was really good, especially in that third quarter. Anytime Indiana tried to run, Orlando got back, held their ground, matched up, slowed them down. What Orlando did really well, and Orlando does better, I think, than almost anybody against the Pacers is slowing them down, preventing them from playing at such a fast break pace. Orlando does a good job controlling the tempo in games like this, even though Orlando's trying to play a little faster too. And if the Magic take the defense that they played, especially in that third quarter and especially at the end of the fourth, they'll give themselves chances to win because that's the defense this team needs. Having said that, their defense in the first quarter and early fourth quarter, completely unacceptable. I know I've said this a million times since last week. Paolo Bancaro's absence shouldn't affect the defense. We sh- The Magic should still have an elite defense. And right now, it's very good. It's not elite. And with the way the offense is going, and, and the offense is going to shift, it's going to change, and we'll get to some of that here in a minute. Um, With, with the, the offense being one of the worst in the league right now, they're not competing unless the defense is elite. And that's asking a lot. So we know defense matters, obviously. It's this team's identity. What is the path on offense, though? I, I, I do want to credit Orlando on this. Um, I do think they entered the season, Jamal Mosley entered the season, changed the offense up a little bit, or changed some of the reads on the offense up a little bit to increase the team's three-point volume. I know it's going to sound contradictory here. The Magic still need to shoot more threes. Like, they cannot be afraid of shooting threes. It's essential to the game. They can't be 29th in the league in three-point field goal attempts again. And again, credit to Jamal Mosley, the Magic are trying to put up more threes. The Magic are trying to get high-value threes. They entered the game leading the league in quarter three-point attempts per game at, I believe, 14.1. If you give me a second to stall, I can tell you how many quarter threes the Magic had in this game as well. Just give me a second to pull that up. It should be up by the time I'm recording this here. Give me one sec. So uh, in this game, the Magic had... Fairly low quarter threes. Uh, They had seven, two for seven on corner threes. They averaged 14. So the Magic have a better relationship with their three-point volume. But the cost of that has been they're attacking the paint less. If you listened to the show at all last year, you probably heard me say this a million times, win the paint, win the game. That was an unvarnished truth. The Magic had to win the paint to compete because they weren't hitting threes. 
And this year, they average about, what, 52 points per game in the paint. Early, you know, high 40s, low 50s. This year, they're in the low 40s per game in, in points in the paint. And especially now without Paolo Van Carroll, they lose their free throw merchant. Getting to the foul line remains a big part of success. It's about being aggressive. It's one thing to get up a set number of threes. And it's another thing to get the right number of threes right, or the right kinds of threes up. The kind that come from paint touches and kickouts. Paint touches, feet kickouts, feet set threes. It's not about pull-ups, not about setbacks, not about creating little games or ghosting. It's about getting in the paint. And so Wednesday was encouraging because for just the second time this season, the Magic scored 50-plus points in the paint. I want to repeat that. They averaged about 50 points in the paint last year. Twice in nine games have they cleared 50 points in the paint for paint. And in this game, they made 70. 70 points in the paint. Now that number, and then they added 26 free throws on top of that. That number, probably a little excessive. Probably not going to repeat 70 points in the paint per game. I, I struggle, and I'm hesitant to say they won't repeat 7 for 25 shooting from 3, but I know better than that. So if the three-pointers aren't falling, the Magic have to get downhill. They have to get in the paint. They have to touch the paint. They have to put pressure on the rim. That's the key to this offense. And credit to Franz Wagner. He was aggressive from the jump. He was trying to get downhill, trying to get to the basket, really putting pressure on that Pacers defense. And that opened everything up for everyone else in the second half. Uh, credit to, you know, Mo Wagner did a good job in the second half. Credit to the offensive rebounds. Credit to Goga Batadze for being a, a force on the glass. Well, I know it had 18 second chance points off 10 offensive rebounds. The Magic made it a point to win that paint. And while they may not score 70 every game, and Indiana is certainly a weird team on that front, they may not score 70 every game. They will have opportunities to get downhill and get to the paint. That is who they are. And it's where they struggled against Oklahoma City. They shot less than 50%, I think, or just barely above 50% in the paint in the Oklahoma City and Dallas games. They just got to finish at the rim. And Franz is getting better at it. Franz is getting more comfortable with it and more comfortable with his role. Uh, Sugg, Jalen Suggs is getting downhill a little bit more. Even Catavius Caldwell-Pope is starting to attack a little bit more. Anthony Black had a great run late in the third, early in the fourth. When he was just getting to the basket, drawing fouls, forcing contact. And that's what the Magic have to do. That's what's going to create success for them offensively. They should be shooting threes. Do not get me wrong. If you get an open shot, you got to take it. They can't be afraid to shoot threes. But the key to success is the paint. And when you lose a key player, you got to simplify everything. If I'm Jamal Mosley, I am continuing to tell him, Get downhill, get to the rim, get to the paint. That's the key to everything. And when the Magic settled for threes, whether it was for two for one or for whatever, that's when they got in trouble against Indiana. We'll clean up some stats. We'll clean up the rest. We'll go through the box score coming up here in just a moment. But first, today's episode of Locked on Magic is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. FanDuel has great offers, whether it's on the NBA, NFL, college, whatever you're looking for, they have it. As you get ready for NFL games this weekend, you can catch the Jacksonville Jaguars, four and a half point home dogs against the Minnesota Vikings, Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, five and a half point home dogs to the San Francisco 49ers, the Miami Dolphins, one and a half point road dogs to the Los Angeles Rams. If you're looking for college football this weekend, Florida currently a 
21 and a half point underdog on the road at number five, Texas and UCF heading to Arizona State. Just two and a half point dogs on the long road trip west. If you're looking for NBA action too, they have plenty to get you ready for the NBA Cup. Uh, the Orlando Magic currently sitting at plus 440 to win the East Group A behind the Knicks and the Sixers still. We'll get the Hornets and Sixers next week at the Kia Center. Get ready for that game. So visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Very clearly, the Magic did good things in this game, uh, and so I, I want to stress that positive. I want to make. I, I want to note that you know, it's dark still. It's not good. Losing sucks, but there is a path forward, and and right now that's what matters. And and, and what what's going to matter next is do the Magic walk that path again? Is Wednesday the aberration, and Sunday and Monday who this team is now, or? Are they going to build off the good things they did Wednesday? Are they going to see the good things they didn't build off of them? I'm not, you know, there is no getting around this. The Magic had been bitterly disappointing this year. Um, even when they were three and one, we were sitting there basking in Paolo Bancaro's brilliance, but frustrated with the lack of growth from several players and, and, and the fact that the Magic weren't getting the same production that they were getting last year. Cole Anthony is out of the rotation. Mo Wagner has been inconsistent on offense, and that only highlights his defensive deficiencies and, and the areas where he struggles. Jonathan Isaac has not been the overwhelmingly positive defensive force that he's been in the past. We're going to talk more about the bench tomorrow. I want to reserve some bench discussion for tomorrow. Um, but the Magic have to find a way. And while they lost Wednesday and they lost for a number of reasons. Defense was loose at key moments. They gave up, you know, 10 for 12 shooting early in the game. Indiana, Indiana's bench set the NBA record for high school goal percentage from reserve players. They missed two shots. Jarris Walker went seven for seven, including three for three from three, had a career game with 17 points. TJ McConnell went seven for seven for 15 points. He hit a three. He never, he never shoots threes, let alone hits threes. The Magic made some gambles on players they were willing to let shoot. And they burned them. Indiana went 12 for 26 from three. And if you're looking for points on the margins, Orlando shot 51.2% in this game. Indiana shot 53.9%. So defense had some really good moments. Do not get me wrong. Orlando turned uh, 11 turnovers into 17 points. The Magic had some really good defensive moments. But this was one of the Magic's weaker defensive games of the season. Uh, and the defense has got to be dialed in. Orlando themselves had 16 turnovers. And while they didn't turn into points, these are lost opportunities to score. Like the, the whole thing about the turnovers, is not necessarily that the Magic can give up a ton of points off turnovers. It's they are, especially now, they are lost opportunities to score. And when you look at this game, this game was truly lost on the margins because the Magic's defense, despite not being good, was competitive. And Orlando's offense gave them a chance. The way the Magic are playing offense right now, they cannot waste games where they shoot 50% from the floor. They scored 70 points in the paint. They got to the line for 26 free throws. They were 20 for 26 from the line. They got 10 offensive rebounds. They, they, they dominated so much of this game. And they still came up short. And so like I said, it, it comes on the margins. I, I mentioned this earlier. Indiana with 12 threes. Or Orlando with seven. That's 15 points right there that you got to make up. And how did the Magic make that up? Second chance points. Uh, offensive rebounds was a big one. Um, 18 second chance points. So there's making that up right there. But then Orlando and Indiana both shoot 26 free throws. Orlando's got a fouling problem on defense. That's, that's something they do have to clean up as well. Orlando makes 20. Indiana makes four. That's four points right there. Uh, you add in turnovers. And just every time Orlando took the lead, they, they never led by more than one point. When Orlando took the lead, or had the chance to take the lead, they'd turn the ball over. They'd miss a shot. You know, they they wouldn't be able to get that stop to kind of carry them through. The Magic did a lot of things well. I, I, I do believe that. But they never could get over the hump. And that's, that's the struggle right now for this team because the margin for error 
is so small. Um, they don't have a Paolo Bancaro who just is a gravitational force. He is the sun. And everybody is attracted to him. Just people surround him. And, you know, hopefully the analytics people now understand what we've all been saying about Paolo Bancaro for, for a couple of years now. Defenses just defenses just get sucked into his gravitational pull. And that opens up opportunities for everyone. And the, the, the exciting part about the way the Magic were playing so far this year is they're getting open threes. They're willing to take those threes. They were getting corner threes. They were getting the quality shots you're supposed to get. And yeah, right now their shooters aren't hitting them. But as Jamal Mosley said after Monday's game, the process was very good. The process is still very, very good. Um, but Orlando still has to take this next step and they have to get over the sump. They have to win a game. Like once, I, 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 again, maybe this is me being too optimistic. When the Magic win one, they will win two. Like this is just a dam waiting to burst. You could you could see the trusses crackling. They're holding on. They're holding this back. But you know they're going to be home at the Kia Center. They play. They shoot and play much better at the Kia Center. That's that's just going to be the reality this year. We're not going to be the road team that we want them to be. Um, they shoot better at the Kia Center. I think they're going to get. They're going to pick up some wins on this on this home stand again. Four and one. Everything's back to normal. If they go four and one, that puts them at seven and six or seven and seven. Uh, that that'll play. You know, they're going out west. That'll be a little more a little trickier, but it'll settle them down. That's where we're at right now. We just need to settle down. And again, like the goal until Paolo is back is stay in the race. Orlando is down ninth in the east, but a game back of Indiana, you know, Indiana's four and four, so they're two games back of third. There's still plenty of time to get back into this race. And, and a few wins, a win streak changes everything. Um, you know, teams are going to start making their moves here, though. Te teams are going to start coming together. So Orlando does have to start piling up wins. They can't take too many of these losses and, and, and still be okay. Some really encouraging performances throughout this game, though, and that, that is worth noting as well. Uh, Franz Wagner, 28 points, 10 for 23 shooting, 2 for 7 from 3, 6 for 8 from uh, the foul line, 8 rebounds, 6 assists, done, did have 3 turnovers. Turnovers have been an issue for Franz and Jalen, but that's somewhat expected. Um, hopefully those will continue to reduce. Um, Franz scored 21 of his 28 in the first quarter, did a big time effort to keep the magic in this game. He was a lot more aggressive. He was looking to get to the basket, looking to hit mid-range jumpers. I've been really impressed with his mid-range jumpers. Uh, he is setting himself up to pass. Like he, he understands he has to take on a bigger playmaking role. Honestly, sometimes I think he's looking to pass too much. There was a few turnovers that he had where he's just trying to squeeze the ball down to Mo on the block when there really wasn't a lot of space, and I'd rather him just shoot over a defender. I, I am not super concerned about efficiency at this stage. I, I just want him to score. Just be aggressive, get downhill, and he really set the tone for the Magic defensively and gave them a, a pretty big boost. Uh, Jalen Suggs, a solid game, 15 points, 6 for 10 shooting, 2 for 2 from the line, 5 rebounds, 6 assists, 5 turnovers. Jalen can be a little loose with the ball, but... I will say this, um, there's still work to do, um, but the important part of what we've seen from Jalen Suggs over the last week is he is getting more comfortable with point guard responsibility. So at the end of the day, when we get to the end of the season and Jalen Suggs looks a lot more comfortable kind of handling the ball and managing this team, as painful as it's been, and, and look, Suggs' struggles have been part of what the Magic are struggling with too, this period is going to be the big period for him. This period is going to be the big development period for him and where he made some mistakes but learned from them very quickly. Uh, you know, Jalen has to reduce the turnovers. He had some bad turnovers where he's just, you know, loose with the ball, got picked a few times. But I really like the way that he played, and I like the progress I'm seeing from him as a point guard. And obviously, the offense has come around. His three-point volume is way down because he's on the ball a lot more and, and the ball isn't kind of popping to him. Um, but I think three-point volume is going to be down for everyone. Like, I didn't love Franz taking seven threes in this game. Um, he took, took a really bad one in the fourth quarter that he shouldn't have taken. Um, but, you know, it, the man, when Paolo gets back, that three-point volume will be up to, like, five or six again, and, and, and everything will be okay. Um, Goga Batadze, awesome game from Goga Batadze. Ten points, 12 rebounds, uh, three blocks. Just a, a huge force on the interior for the Magic. They, they got everything from him. Uh, and, you know, the only problem with him was foul trouble. He had five fouls. 
Um, but four offensive rebounds, a lot of putbacks. Only complaint I have is he took two threes that that just, you know, eventually he will take threes and it, that has to be part of his game. Um, but not with the way the Magic are shooting right now. Like, yes, he's got to be an option. He can't be afraid to shoot when he gets the ball. But that just should not be an option right now with the team really struggling from three and, and needing to value every possession. But look, it, it's it's going to be harder and harder to keep Goga Batadze off the floor. Um, it was hard last year for him to go to the bench and not be part of this rotation. He gives this team some grit defensively. He gives this team a rim protector. He is someone who can play above the rim a little bit, which which the Magic desperately need as well. Um, he just really fits this team. And even though he has some limitations on offense, Batadze, Batadze gives this team so much energy. And 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 again, like it's been a, it's only been two games since he returned. Um, he's been a he's he's rejuvenated this team in a lot of ways. Um, giving them some good energy, and that that's important. Um, Contavious Caldwell Pope, first first really good game for KCP. 13 points, five for 10, two for five from three, five rebounds, two assists for Afro Kenny. Um, look, we've been waiting for, for Kenny to have a good game um, and hit a couple threes, which is really helpful. If he's shooting two for five from three, that's 40%. That's kind of the, the, the spot we're aiming for from him shooting-wise. He shot confidently. You know, he had that he had a big run of scoring in the second quarter when the match got back in the game. That's why this game was close at halftime, was Kenny made some shots. Kenny, Kenny, you know, like has had bad stretches before, like he's had to start the season and still shoots 40%. So that means there's probably big rush coming where he's gonna make a lot of threes. Again, right now it's about what carries over game to game, what what is gonna last beyond this one game. Uh, and this was a really good showing from him. Off the bench. Anthony Black, nine points, four for four shooting, six uh, six rebounds, uh, really aggressive getting to the basket. Play, uh, uh, sorry, twelve points for Anthony Black. Sorry, I read Jonathan Isaac with nine nine uh, nine nine uh, points. Um, Anthony Black, sorry, twelve points, four for seven shooting, uh, six assists. Uh, had a turnover, but the one turnover is not going to kill you. Uh, two steals as well. Best game AB's played since last week against the Pacers. Um, just really aggressive getting downhill, got to the basket, um, used his size really well. Uh, really locked in and, 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 you know, like we'll talk about the bench tomorrow, uh, but AB playing well makes this team really good. Uh, same with Mo Wagner. Mo Wagner, 14 points, four for eight shooting, six or seven from the foul line. He just does such a good job putting pressure on defenses. He's really crafty around the basket. I know that's usually reserved for lefties, but he is crafty around the basket. Um, does a good job showing the ball. And, you know, it it is, you know, very, very clear that his value derives from his offense. It's the same deal as Cole Anthony. If Mo Wagner's not scoring, his value decreases dramatically because his defense, it's better than it was when he got here. Still a work in progress, still a major work in progress. And because Indiana was playing a smaller lineup or more mobile lineup, um, Mo Wagner looked a little out of place. And look, it's not like Jairus Walker was doing anything crazy. The book on Jairus Walker is to let him shoot. And he made his shots. And you can live with that. You can live with him making shots because that's that, you know, that's the critic that was the criticism in the draft process. Uh, last year was that he's not a shooter. That that was the thing that was going to hold him back. He made shots. You can live with that. Uh, at the end of the day, you'll live with that. Um, but Bo Wagner came on strong, especially in the second half, enabled the Magic to kind of stay in this game. But again, defense remains a, a big question mark. Again, the Lenders shoot 51.2% from the floor. They're 7 for 25 from 3. They score 70 points in the paint. There, there is a lot to like, a lot to take away the Magic found a way to be competitive in this game and had every chance to win. And it is disappointing that they did not win this game. Let's let's be clear on that. It is disappointing the Magic did not win this game. I'm painting a positive picture. I believe there's a lot of good to take away from this game. I believe this team is on the right track and that a win is on the horizon. I, I think, the, sorry, 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 my friend Jake Madison of Locked on Pelicans. I think the Magic win on Friday. I think, I think the, the losing streak snaps, I think the Magic, Pick up a win Friday. I think they win Sunday. I think they're going to start this home stand off really, really well. Um, but no doubt about it, Orlando lost this game. Orlando made critical errors, critical mistakes. They cannot make against quality teams. Quality teams like New Orleans. Um, they made mistakes they cannot make, cost them this game. And now they have to figure now they, you know, now they have to play moral victory instead of saying, oh, we won this game. Now we know. They're still figuring out how to play. They're still figuring out what that formula is. And while this game revealed a path to victory, it's still one they haven't walked. 
And that's going to be the challenge for this team moving forward. The Indiana Pacers defeat the Orlando Magic 118 to 111. Orlando again back in action at the Kia Center on Friday against the New Orleans Pelicans. But that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at Philip R underscore OMD. Subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts. Search your tune in Himway, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all the sell podcasts to your podcast enable listening device. For latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out OrlandoMagicDaily.com. You can find us there on Twitter at OMagicDaily. And for even more Orlando Magic content, be sure to check out my Patreon page, the Orlando Magic Hub, at patreon.com slash Orlando Magic Hub. As always, thank you for your support. As if that wasn't enough, you can now check out the Locked On Magic daily newsletter. It's the one stop for ultimate team and league coverage delivered right to your inbox. Sign up for free now at lockedondaily.com. That's lockedondaily.com. Start your day with the all new free Locked On Magic newsletter. That's going to do for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. Like I said, tomorrow, we will chat about the bench. We'll talk about the struggles of the Orlando Magic's bench, why that is a big deal. We'll get to that on tomorrow's episode of Locked On Magic. But until then, for Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Philip Rossman-Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.